I have a problem I've never told you about. It started with just one, but then I, I just kept going. I couldn't stop. Over the past 15 years, I have built more than 20 workbenches. The last workbench I built was two years ago, and since then I quit cold turkey except for that bench I built last year. And those two other benches I built last year. But I swear, since then I have been, I have been completely workbench free. Until this week. I have a friend who is learning to blacksmith and his wife contacted me and said, I know you're good at building workbenches. Can you build him a workbench for a blacksmith? <sighs> I guess I can do just one more workbench. How's it going everybody? Sorry about that weird intro. That was just way too much fun to film. Uh, so yeah, my, Buddy's wife contacted me and asked if I could build a workbench for him since I do a little bit of blacksmithing and I have built one blacksmithing bench before, but to tell you the truth, it didn't turn out very well. A number of years ago, I actually wrote on a couple different forums asking some of the metal workers and the blacksmiths, you know, what is a good bench height? What is a good style of bench for a metal worker? And every single one of them seemed to think that that was a ridiculous question. If you ask a woodworker, what's the best way to build a bench? Everyone has an opinion on it. But in the metalworking world, and in the blacksmithing world, apparently that's a dumb question. So, I don't know why that is. So I'm gonna show you what I believe is the best way of building a blacksmith's workbench. All right, the first thing I wanted to talk about would be the uh, material selection. A lot of metal workers, when they build their bench, they'll use something like a quarter inch plate steel of some kind. Uh, and a lot of that, is, part of that is because it's, you can weld on top of it, and part of that is just its resilience. I can get the same amount of resilience using a solid wood top if you're using construction material. Um, the other thing about that is the construction material is gonna be a lot cheaper, but since the blacksmith that I'm building this for doesn't do welding, doesn't do fabrication or any of that, a wood top is actually gonna suit him very well. And like I said, it's a little bit cheaper. And as far as I'm concerned, it should last just as long as a, uh, as a metal top, provided you take care of it. And of course, if he ever wants to add a piece of plate steel to this bench in the future, he can always do that. It will add a little bit more resilience in terms of hammering on top of the bench. Uh, but as far as making a wooden bench versus a metal bench, the wooden bench is going to have the same amount of stability, the uh, same amount of rigidity, uh, because I am making this bench with mortise and tenons. But if you ever want to add a piece of plate steel to the top of a metal worker's bench, that is also a very good option. Meet me over at the table saw. So one of the things I decided to do differently on this workbench was to shorten it to about 31 inches and to widen the legs to a full 5x5 five five inch. When I'm done building the workbench, it's going to seem incredibly low, but the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to be putting a vise on top of this bench. And one of the first things I noticed after building my first blacksmith's bench was that it was so high it was hard to hammer on top of the vise, so you'll want to lower it considerably. Even though it's going to end up looking so short, believe it or not, it's not any shorter than the average dining room table. Seriously, go measure your dining room table. You'd be surprised how short they actually are. Tape measure, where are you? I know I just had you. I've been doing this for literally five minutes. I have no idea what I did with it. Um, I do have some brand new ones. See, I have some brand new ones, but I don't want to break them out yet because I haven't broken this one. 
yet. I've only lost it. I know you're here somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. I, oh my gosh, okay, I'm not even, I'm not even playing. Uh, I found it, it was under my table saw. All right, my two by fours are eight feet, and I want them to be six feet. So I'm going to cut off two feet on the left side of the blade. The boards that I'm cutting here are going to end up being glued together to form the top of the bench. Now I normally like to build my workbenches about 8 feet long because that's usually the length of the 2x4s and I really am addicted to my horizontal spaces. I love the ability to spread out, but most people don't agree with me on that. They like smaller workbenches and since I don't know the size of the space that this bench is going into, I'm just going to do a normal 6 foot bench. Okay, so I ended up using mortise and tenons for this project just because mortise and tenon joinery is some of the most sturdy joinery that you can create. I ended up going with a two inch tenon just because I knew that would make it more sturdy and then I ended up doing a step tenon for all of the rails and styles that go on top. The reason I'm doing that is because if you just do a normal sized tenon for the very top of the workbench, you end up with a mortise that has so little material uh, at the very top of it that it will end up breaking out and cracking over time. And so the idea is to get the tenon as far away from the end of the leg as possible. And that will just make the bench last exponentially longer. We're gonna go ahead and start with the end grain, okay? Go ahead and chop. All right, last corner. Give me a strike, one strike. There we go. Now we can straighten this out. Like this. Or we don't have to. Yeah, it's a little bit. Just put them over. Do I have to spray in there? Not right. Other way. Other way. Oh, it's really tight. Now whenever you're cutting mortises in a leg like this, you have uh, mortises on two separate orientations and a lot of the time they end up meeting here in the middle, so I have a little bit of a gap to worry about. Um, and of course if you're going to have tenons in there, the tenons are going to run right into each other. And so the options that you have are either to offset your mortises, which I've done in the past, uh, and that obviously that just depends on how you want to build it. Uh, in this situation, I wanted all of my rails to be the same four inches from the bottom. Uh, so that we have a lot of space here for a shelf in the future. 
The other option that you have is if you do want to make them the full depth and you do uh, want your tenons to match in the middle, the other option is to cut your tenon at a 45 degree angle. If you don't have any uh, pipe clamps, these ratchet straps work really well. I can usually get one around it, but I only have the small ones. Whoops, oh, I bent it. There you go. Now, if you do this correctly, you should end up with a perfect transition across this. I can feel a little bit of a transition there, but it being a workbench, it isn't that big of a deal. difficult on myself. I unscrewed the base from the top now that all the holes are drilled and everything. Now I've decided I'm going to use linseed oil for this project. The main reason I like to use linseed, I got sawdust all over my bench still. Let me get all that off first. The reason I like to use linseed oil on workbenches is because this will actually penetrate into the fibers of the wood and then seal up. Uh, this is really good for workbenches, it's good for hand tools, that kind of stuff. Um, just, man, I got sawdust everywhere. I need to blow this up before I, hold on. Okay, like I was trying to say, the reason I like to use linseed oil is because it will penetrate into the wood and it will seal. Uh, wood over time, if you don't take care of it, will have a tendency to warp and twist and bend and it'll have checks on the end. Checking is where the wood splits on the end of the wood. Um, and so the, what the linseed oil will do is it will keep that moisture out by actually sealing in all of those fibers. Ideally what you'd want to do is completely saturate all of the wood and then after a couple of weeks you'd probably want to put another coat on and then maybe after a couple of more months you'd put on another coat. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing any of that. I'm just going to saturate the wood this one time and I'm not going to worry about that. So in addition to the workbench, I was also told that the blacksmith in question did not have any place for his anvil, and so off camera I set up this tree stump as well. I had to level it with some uh, 2x4s that I had on hand, and then once it was leveled, I just put that in the trailer as well so I could give it to him. So I didn't really talk much about this vise. Uh, this is one of the best vices that you can get for cheap. This is one of the Harbor Freight vices, and apparently it comes highly recommended. It's basically a machinist vise. But everything is all set up and ready to go. Got the tabletop under here, um, bench is all upright, and I'm bringing the extra screws and a drill to install everything. So I'll install everything there, because this tabletop is actually heavier than the entire rest of the bench. Uh, it is heavy, it is solid wood. Ended up being about two and a half inches thick. Maybe three. Looks like two and a half, I'm not sure, I didn't measure it. It was three. So this bench has been in my buddy's house for about a week now and he's already gotten a bit of use from it. I, uh, I'm really enjoying seeing some of the pictures he's been sending me of a couple of the projects he's been working on. I think it's so cool that he has uh, a forge now. 
I remember when I first started blacksmithing, I didn't have a bench to work with, so I was literally working on the dirt. I was working on top of the dirt, and uh, so I think this is so cool that he was able to have a, uh, a workbench set up specifically for blacksmithing. Even when I had my first blacksmithing bench set up, it was never really something I was happy with, so I'm so happy I was able to kind of do a redemption project and actually do this properly. Well, thank you to anybody who stuck this far into the video. If you enjoyed the video at all, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch y'all next time.